Good morning guys from Surin in the northeast of Thailand's Isan province. I'm outside the train station here. Let's take a look around this place and see what it's got to offer. Let's take a quick peek at the inside of the train station. It's a typically cute Thai train station. A few dogs lazing around there. Good to see some men at work working on the tracks there. So it's morning here, a beautiful day, warming up a bit. A few tuk-tuks hanging around. A nice welcome to Surin and with the elephants here. It's good to mention Surin is renowned for elephants. They have a festival every year celebrating elephants. So throughout this, this small city you'll see statues and sculptures and pictures of elephants around. It's pretty cool. I love elephants, really. People always say elephants never forget. And I always think about the elephant I rode about 20 years ago uh, somewhere outside of Chiang Mai in Thailand named Tonka. That was a sweet elephant. It was a bit of a younger elephant and uh, fed it some sugarcane. These days people say we shouldn't do stuff like that, but I just should mention this is the main road running through the center, but we're gonna take a left here for a bit first because this street has some of the older architecture, some old wooden buildings here. Most of the architecture in Surin is from 1950s, 60s, and 70s. And there's some decent stuff from that era, but not a lot of older stuff. But uh, some more elephants, by the way. Yeah, but on this street, you get a bit of older wooden architecture. And it's worth a peek. Anyway, back to talking about Tonka, the young elephant in Chiang Mai. What a sweet little elephant. 20 years later, I remember Tonka. I always think about, I wonder if uh, Tonka remembers me still. Yeah, but like I was saying, these days people say we shouldn't ride elephants. It's kind of a contentious subject, really. The problem is uh, a lot of people who handle elephants in this part of the world don't take care of them properly. That's the issue. So you got to be really careful about that. Of course, they're lovely animals. You know, we don't want people to exploit them and treat them badly. That's for sure. 20 years ago, you didn't hear much talk about stuff like that. 20 years ago, there, were, there was a lot of uh, trade and illegal wildlife and so on in Thailand quite openly. I, I walked through markets where they had signs that said no photo and they had all kinds of strange creatures bundled up ready for sale and it looked terrible, really horrible. And uh, these days at least it's not an open thing, you know, that's progress at least, it's something, right? So this is a pretty street here. I do like some of this old wooden architecture. Some of it's fairly simple. Some of it's a bit ornate. You get some bits of wood carving featured on some buildings as well. This one's kind of obscured a bit, but they do tend to be quite old, these kinds of buildings. Yeah, so I'm delving off onto a side street here. And uh, you might be thinking, where the heck is he going, right? 
Yeah, well, I wanted to show you those buildings. I think they're kind of interesting, but also I think it's uh, quite important to know about the transport connections around here, how things connect together. Let's first get across the road here before we have any horrible incidents. Okay. Good, good. Good start to the day so far. No accidents. So, yeah, if you arrive in Surin, it's very lovely and kind of almost genteel to arrive on the old trains. But uh, I think most people will probably end up rolling into town on a bus. And some people might come from not far away using a, a van as well. So, And who knows, some people will probably come rolling into town on a Songtao, an old pickup truck that's used for transporting people as public transport. So they might end up, you know, good chance most people are going to end up turning up here at the bus station. You can see it's very close to the train station. That's very nice, I think. It's not like that in Thailand a lot. There are a few of the better hotels around here, as you can see, with swimming pools. So around the train station, plenty of food options and drink options. It's a tidy little train station area. But let's quickly backtrack to the front of the train station. All right, we're backtracked at back outside the train station there. And let's head on up the main thoroughfare through the center of the old town of Surin here. It's quite interesting looking, as you can see, a lot of kind of 50s, 1960s, 1970s architecture. Interesting military police on the left of me there. There's a military base just on the edge of the town. So the area between the train station and the bus station, like all the cities and bigger towns in Thailand, apparently has a bit of activity at nighttime with dodgy women hanging around looking to meet people like you or someone else, maybe, possibly. I didn't actually go out last night though. I normally like to stroll around in the evening and check out the nightlife just for educational purposes, of course. But, um, you know, I have to have something to tell you guys about, right? Part of the culture. There's the daytime, the daytime lifestyle and the night lifestyle, all right? Wherever you go in the world. So it's interesting to note, culturally speaking, hmm. These videos are made for educational purposes only and please do not try some of these stunts at home. They are performed by professionals. So anyway, back to uh, reality here on the main road of Surin. And uh, yeah, as I said, I didn't go out last night. I was pretty tired, actually. A couple days ago, I hitchhiked. I hitchhiked 250 kilometers or kilometers, depending on your persuasion, from Cambodia, from Osmak, Chong Chom border crossing between Cambodia and Thailand, to Uban Ratchitani. It's an interesting little shop, isn't it? Hmm. Excuse me, sir, the product I bought from your shop doesn't work correctly. <laughs> well, what did you expect? Anyway, yeah, it was a pretty long hitch, but it went very, very well, actually. Everything went as planned, but it was a hot day. It made me pretty tired. It's a nice little place on the corner of this roundabout here. I like it. Yeah, it made me kind of tired. And uh, then I, I looked around Ubon Ratchitani where I've been 
a few times and filmed there. Hope you guys have checked that video. It's a lovely place, Uban Rachitani. And then I went by a train using the train line that goes between Bangkok and Uban Rachitani to one second, we'll just get across here. Okay, so yeah, I went from there to the next place and then to this place. So it's been pretty busy in the last few days. I felt a bit like I needed to chill out in the evening yesterday, so I took a little bit of time to chill and walked around to kind of check out this place before filming for you guys so that, um, oh, we'll go around this way, so that I knew what I'm telling you about. And that was all good. It's very nice. I was out for a short time in the evening, actually, but uh, didn't go around the train station, bus station area. I went to a night market, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes. That was really nice. Mm. Uh, Sam Law here. Hello, good morning. What's on the menu today, huh? Cherry fellow with a smile and a wave and a top of the morning sir to you. Gotta love that down home friendly. Hello, there you go. That's more like it, eh? That's right. I came all the way here for some smiles. Where, where are my woman smiles, eh? If I give one, I want to get one back. There's <laughs> no, no unconditional love around here, I tell you what. If I give you something, I want something back. That dang right. At least that's the rules we're playing by today. We can change them at will. Tomorrow could be different. Extra sketch. No problem. New day, new rules. Okay. <laughs> so. Let's continue along the way. This girl on the motorbike seems, where are you going to? You don't look like you know where you're going, eh? <laughs> like a lot of people in this part of the world. They get on their motorbike or in their car, start the engine, start moving a few inches forward and then suddenly look very confused about where they actually intend to go to. Sole path for the course. Get used to it. It's good for a laugh. <laughs> All right, we're going to continue down the main road in a minute, but I'll just mention, this road closes in the evening and they set up a night market here. It's really nice. Lots of food and a few products for sale as well, bits of clothing and so on. Mostly food though. Okay, so we've just come from down here, but I want to take you guys to the right here a bit because it's pretty cool. I'll show you why. Off in the distance there, you can probably see there's a clock tower. And it's kind of a landmark of Surin. Interesting architecture here. I can say I wasn't really a fan of uh, this kind of architecture before I came to Southeast Asia. But it started to grow on me. The vehicles on the right look like they're stuck in traffic. They're not. They're actually parked up. It's kind of weird. I noticed in Surin, they let people double park a lot. It looked like they had a guy actually managing it as well.
Got to try one of these Sam laws here in Surin at some point. There's a lot of them around. I notice all through Isan province there are Sam laws pretty much in every sizable community. Let's duck into the market for a minute. So, hello little dog. Hoping for some scraps or something. Had some epic grilled chicken here this morning. A lot of interesting food actually. Some snacks as well. Hello! <laughs> bit of fruit, tubers, root vegetables, very healthy. Yeah, this is a pretty good market actually. So there's food ready to eat. You can eat in here or take away some clothes. Hello, good morning. Some drinks. It doesn't have a bad smell. It's very important for me that markets don't have a bad smell. So that's a good sign, right? It's another thing in the region you find when there's a tiny little space, tiny little skinny space to squeeze through. Only one person can fit. Most of the time, if another person's coming along, they're gonna not give way. They're gonna try to somehow force through that. Your bodies have to be rubbing against each other to squeeze through the little space. Like that woman just did back there. Maybe she's just lonely though. But yeah, now it's a kind of a cultural habit. It's, you know, but you do get probably 50% of people who are more polite and they'll just stand to the side. Okay, I'm just saying. It's just unusual in uh, most places that people will try to push through at the same time. It happens here in this part of the world a lot more than other places. People in this part of the world tend to have a different way of thinking about personal space. Let's head across here. Okay, let's keep on going through the next part of this market. It's a pretty big market actually. I like it a lot. Yeah, the whole concept of giving way doesn't seem to have caught on in this part of the world. You see it with driving habits as well. It's always like, me first, my car's bigger, you have to move, you know, this kind of thing, whatever. But I always think, well, I'm bigger than you as a person, so... <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, I think that way. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to end up trampling over any people, obviously, but yeah, people do tend to kind of dive in front of you a bit. All right, so this is the area around the market. Let's head back this way where we came from, back to the main road and take a right and continue going out along the main road there and have a look. Okay, we just come from out of there, back onto the main road, train station's down there, and we're going to continue on up this way. Keep exploring a bit. There are some more cool things about this place. So I want to tell you guys, um, Surin has uh, a province also named Surin. So there's the small city of Surin and there's a province called Surin and uh, it's like that with a lot of 
small cities and big towns in Thailand that there's uh, the metropolis and the province with the same name. So it's pretty common in Thailand. So yeah, in the province of Surin, it's kind of interesting that there are a number of ruins from the Angkor uh, Khmer civilization, the old Cambodian civilization. A lot of uh, ruins of temples. I think uh, there's like a handful of ruins that I've read about, at least. Could be more than that as well, probably. But yeah, at least maybe about five fairly decent sized ones. Talking about temple ruins, but there are other kinds of remnants as well. And uh, yeah, some of them are probably not that interesting to look at, but my experience is when you look at photos on the internet, they don't do these places justice. I think the main thing is transport, getting to some of these places in this province. That's the hard part. So if you rented a car, you could do a big kind of a loop probably in one day and visit a handful of these places and it'll probably be an awesome day trip I'm sure it'll be great and not a lot of foreigners do it so that'll be a nice thing to do so one I've visited which is really a great one one of the best ones in Thailand in my opinion of any era is uh, I think it's called Panom Rung it's on top of a volcano, an extinct volcano, of course. And it has uh, yeah, beautiful old uh, Angkor, like Angkor Wat style temple on top of the volcano. It's magnificent. I went there oh, about seven or eight years ago, I think. Ended up, uh, I think I used a van or I'm not sure, I went along the main highway and uh, jumped out as close as I could to that place. And I think I, I think, I don't know if I hitchhiked or if I paid like a tuk-tuk or a motorbike taxi. It wasn't too far to go to a place where I could sleep. Nice temple that we just walked past, by the way. Looks like the nicest one in Surin. Um, yeah, I found a, some accommodation fairly close to the old Khmer temple and uh, the owner called a motorbike for me in the morning and I paid about, I think, five dollars or something in the equivalent in Thai Baht to take a ride up to the top and have a look around and then back down to the accommodation after I finished. That was really nice. Definitely recommend it. All right, so a couple old wood buildings along the side there. Let's run across here. So we came from down there. Beautiful temple actually. All right, we're just gonna take a little side track here for a second. I'm not gonna go too far into here, but Wanna, I just wanted to mention that um, this interesting thing you can see up ahead here. This is the city pillar shrine of Surin, just up there. But I'll leave that for you guys to uh, look at more closely. And we'll continue on along the main road. Yeah, so the province has a lot to offer, but getting to these kinds of temples, that's the issue. They're not that close to uh, the actual city of Surin. All right. See, there's some, there are some people, like I said earlier, probably half of the people are super polite, like Uber 
polite and I'll stop for you like this car just like slowed right down for me because he saw I was filming <coughs> excuse me but filming or not filming actually people do that quite often it's a real contrast with the behavior in the region you know some people are like overly polite like really charmingly so really impresses you and then other people are just like really selfish about how they behave as far as like personal space and right of way and all this kind of stuff even to the point that you could get run down and killed when you're in the right nice little bit of old wooden architecture falling down what a shame but someone still lives in there that's amazing too Yeah, so it's still early days in Thailand as far as preserving old buildings goes. It's starting to happen. But yeah, it's really the time now. They need to uh, really, really look at preserving these older buildings to keep the charm in these kinds of places. But so far, I have to say my verdict about Surin, I like it definitely more than I expected. I thought it would be kind of an okay place. Yesterday I was in Sisaket. Um, so you should definitely have a look at the video about that place. That was an okay place for sure, definitely decent. But uh, yeah, Surin, I can say I like it a bit more. Definitely, just it's a bit bigger, but not too big. Yeah, I like it here. Definitely a bit better than I expected so far. But we haven't finished walking yet, so I'll show you some more cool stuff and um, be interested to hear what you guys think as well. Let me know in the comments. Some definitely already planning to come back here for the elephant festival at some point but I didn't want to mix that in together with a video about just the normal town itself because I think these kinds of things deserve their own kind of presentation you know their own focus it's a strange looking place what's this is it a school? It's very colorful. I cannot read Thai, so... Hello, good morning. This guy like staring at me like I just stepped off a UFO. You get a lot of that in Southeast Asia as well. People just like staring. People riding their motorbike or driving their car at a fairly normal speed and then suddenly they slow down to half speed. You might be trying to cross the road. They just like block you. That you're stuck in the middle of the road and they're like just like staring, just like gawping at you. Like you've got bloody tentacles growing out all over your body or something. <laughs> like you've got antennas growing out the top of your head. Big bulging eyes. Beep, 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 beep. I come in peace, I come in peace. But if you look at them the same way, they look kind of shocked about that too. <laughs> they don't quite get it, you know? I don't know. There's a funny thing sometimes, funny dynamic going on, like a certain kind of, um, I don't know if it's a lack of self-awareness or what it is, you know, it's just, yeah. I don't know, it's kind of, it's like a comedy in a way. These are the kinds of things like, depends on, on your mood on the day, right? If you slept well, if things are going well, it's really hilarious. If you're having a really rotten day, you know, they kind of bug you a bit. But it's never too bad because there's always like uh, something that, you know, comes up like a minute later or whatever that is really lovely, charming, some friendly person or whatever, polite person, some nice smile, kind smile from someone. You know, so that's my experience anyway. 
over many years. And it's funny because, you know, when I first came to Thailand 20 years ago, the first day, you know, or the first evening I was in Thailand, in Bangkok, I thought, oh my gosh, my gosh, you know, what is this place? It's awful. The people are so rude. It's terrible. Bunch of scammers everywhere, you know? But, um, yeah, over the following days, you know, as each day went on and I experienced more and got away from the tourist areas, I started to, like, connect with all the charm of the country. Then my feelings became a lot more mixed, you know? I'm certainly not one of those people who wears the rose-colored glasses and hates on their own homeland and talks down about their own country and then goes to some other places that they don't really understand and then they just see what they want to see and then, you know, they're going on about, oh, so great here and everyone's so lovely. You know, I'm not like that, you know, that's just kind of escapism mentality living in denial. Of course, the world's not a utopia. You're not going to find any place in the world that's a utopia. Come on, let's be real about it. But yeah, just dealing with people on a one-to-one, -one, you know, personal basis, you know, watching yourself, watching your back, being responsible, you know, treating yourself, treating your body like a temple, treating yourself with respect, taking care of yourself, not putting yourself out there like a sucker, but at the same time, taking each person, you know, as an individual, which basically means don't trust anyone until they earn it, but, you know, don't be surprised when you get random acts of kindness it's pretty much par for the course everywhere. You're gonna find some nice people and you're gonna find some really rotten people as well and you better be ready for everything, that's all, you know? But yeah, be ready for everything, that's it. So, are you ready for this? And here we are at this pretty cool monument here looks like a tough guy on the top part doesn't it who is that I don't know looks like some guy from the old times elephant tusks pretty cool yeah I'm sure he's famous probably some famous warrior if anyone knows let us know in the comments if I can find out I'll put it up as a subtitle so this is kind of interesting as we come to the uh, back of the old town or to the other side of the old town so we've actually crossed the entire old town but wait there's more something more of interest here there's this water here and this nice green area this is actually the remnants of a moat about half the old town is surrounded by a moat and this part is really nice. This is ac actually quite gorgeous along here. So the air is actually very fresh this morning. People fishing in here. I don't know if I'd want to eat the fish from this water though, considering it probably all drains out from the old town. <laughs> It's like a totally urban environment, but you see that in Thailand a lot. People fishing, catching fish to eat from filthy canals. Actually, this water doesn't smell bad at all. It looks not too bad, but I wouldn't swim in it or anything like that. I wouldn't eat the fish from it. it looks like an interesting temple on the other side. Yeah, so this park wraps around a bit. All right, so let's call that a wrap and that's Sirin guys. So please hit subscribe and like and hit that bell button if you haven't already so you can get some updates on upcoming videos and uh, let's keep going on the train ride across the south of Isan.
because I'm gonna get on the train later and go to the next place. I'm doing the whole train line between Ubon Ratchitani and Bangkok. So come on, keep going with me. Let's get along the way and see you in the next one. And don't be late.